Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. In this week's video, I'm getting back to creating. I use JRV rice paper. I use DIY paints and products. Both of those items can be found on my website at createyourowncozy.com. My soft opening is almost ready to be like a full, like legit opening. And I also use IOD products, um, some transfers and some molds in this video just to get my creative juices going again. If you guys want to see what I do, stick around. The first project in today's video is this faux frying pan is what I'm going to call it. And I thrifted a while back and thought I am going to cover this with two coats of DIY paint in the color white swan. You can see it is so heavily pigmented how well the white paint covers up that writing and it just needs a second solid coat of the DIY paint. After that, I am going to wet distress with a wet wipe. I'm going to get out the IOD Transfer Holly Glen that was in the recent holiday release and put a cute little porcupine critter in the center. I just thought he was perfect for this and just cutting the edges so that I don't have to worry about the plastic rounding right here. Just putting it on here, making sure I get the whole thing kind of rubbed in and then I work with the tool that comes with the transfer pack to peel it back. You will see it starts to pull away and change color a little bit. So after that has been rubbed on. I burnish it with my finger and then burnish it with the opposite side of this plastic sheet. After that, I'm going to go over this whole thing with liquid patina. Um, liquid patina is a decoupage medium within the DIY paint line, but it is also a top coat for DIY paint. And the sheen of it dries a little bit duller than the big top. So I just had this out and decided to use this to seal the piece. Next, I am grabbing some ribbon that I got a while back from the Dollar Tree. Just putting it around the little neck right here and then putting some twine to hang it. I thought this was a cute little Christmas ornament. Um, if you have a bigger tree where you need some larger ornaments, this is the perfect scale for that. What do you guys think? I got these little snowmen from the bins, which equated to like a dollar a piece. And I was inspired by painted mason jars for this one and decided I just wanted to have a nice neutral snowman. I could have painted a bunch of colors, but I am a neutral girl and I wanted nice neutral snowmen with some of the glass coming through with the distressing. Two solid coats of white swan, wet distressing with a baby wipe. And then I did cover the whole thing with big top that had more of a sheen to it. I wanted them to have a little bit of a shine because it is on top of a glass jar. I considered adding some ribbon to this piece, but you know what? I am going simple here. Just this is it. Cute little snowman. He can add some height in vignettes. He can hide some candy on the inside. Nice and simple upcycle.
I have had this next little wooden plaque in my stash for I don't even want to think how long I was cleaning out some spaces and I was like I'm gonna use this so just wet it's raw wood right so I just did my water spritzer on top of the raw wood and now I'm using dark and decrepit and my idea is I want this to be more of a stain so I'm just covering it um, along with some water and then I use a paper towel to wipe back the excess and it acts like a wash or a stain to this piece of wood that was raw brand new wood. Now it looks like it has some history. Next, I am going to get the very last bits of my resin. This is supposed to be equal parts, but it turned out that I did not have equal parts left for the end pieces here but I just put it all together you can see that it doesn't turn white which should have been my first clue but guys it still worked just fine so I poured it in there and there were some like little chunks but after 10 minutes it cured and there's a little bit of yellow on there but it looks amazing and I was planning on painting it anyway so I did two coats of white swan and then covered it up with liquid patina as its top coat I did the painting and the top coat prior to putting it on the final piece of wood because I really love that two-tone look of wood and white and I did not want to risk getting any paint on that wood. I forgot to mention that the resin that I used is called Amazing Casting Resin and it cures within 10 minutes and I grabbed that over on Amazon and I will have a link in the description box below. I am really loving this resin. So here is the painted piece. I am using some wood glue on the back here, just making sure that I use my finger to get on all these little edges. I don't want it the, the glue to seep out, but I also don't want the little edges of this tree to come loose. So I attach that, make sure it is adhered nice and flat. I put something really light on top of it to make sure it dried flat and then I was like you know what it's missing something do I add some ribbon at the top and the answer is yes you could leave it the original way like I, f I feel like that looks really cool just without the ribbon but this ribbon right here I got from Dollar Tree a very long time ago and I am just wrapping the ribbon around the center cutting the ends to be even, making them look a little bit fancier, and then hot gluing it on top of the Christmas tree. And I think it looks fabulous. I love some two-tone white and wood. What do you guys think? Project number four is starting with this free to me, I would call it like a little basket Christmas tree that I got a long time ago. I painted it white and then I just stopped. So I was like, you know what? It is time to use this thing or else I am going to redonate it. And then I saw the new vintage Christmas tree rice paper from JRV. Um, just a reminder, I do have all of my JRV uh, rice paper and decoupage paper products up on my website at createyourowncozy.com. But I am just using water around the edges so that it is a nice natural looking rip as opposed to cut nice and straight because I think that would look a little strange. So the piece was already painted white a while back. And I decided I want the little edges to kind of be dry brushed with green. So I'm using DIY paint in the color aviary just to kind of dry brush the outside and the back. I was also thinking for this one, this could be a fun Christmas ornament that is that larger scale. So for the folks that have those big humongous Christmas trees with the huge bulbs, you need other interesting 
large scale ornaments and I thought this would totally do the trick. So I only did one coat of the aviary and now I am putting down a coat of liquid patina and then putting the paper inside. Now rice paper is a little thicker than their decoupage paper. I have found that I need more um, product of liquid patina than with the decoupage paper. So I'm just going to work in little sections, put that down, then do the liquid patina on the top, get all the air bubbles out, and then work my way to all the edges of the paper to make sure there aren't any wrinkles or bubbles. After getting this on there, I was like, you know what? Let's distress the green a little bit and get some of that white to come back through. But I felt like it could use something on the top there. Now, if I had like, I was looking for like a uh, metal star or snowflake that I could put on the top of here, but I did not have any of that in my stash. So I'm just wondering what in the world can I do while I seal everything in with the liquid patina. And then I remembered this new mold from IOD. They had the little star in here. So I got out some air dry clay, put some cornstarch in there, made a little mold of the star and then glued that down on my project. I probably could have made this a little bit more distinct if I could have decided on a color to paint the star. Instead, I just used the gilding wax from DIY and I don't know, I feel like I want it to stand out a little bit more than this, but I'm all about subtle, so I'm happy with how it looked. I did get out some ribbon to put on the stump or the little bottom of the tree and up top. This one was a little too much, but this one I got from Hobby Lobby with some lace in the center was perfect. So I just put it on the stump and made a little hook so it could hang on a tree easily. And I thought this one turned out cute. The fifth and final project for today is going to be using two of the new JRV holiday papers. This is the Birds on Berry and the Pastel Deer. And both of these are on my website. And everything that I'm going to make it on is going to be scrap wood. So I had that piece of scrap wood that I had already painted white for another project and I didn't use this piece of wood. It was in my stash and so I decided to cut it to size, made sure that I covered those cut pieces with white paint. And then this other thing was painted pink from something I had done for my girls. I was going to use that for the bottom. I used the same technique I used in the prior decoupage project which was draw with water around the pieces of paper and then kind of rip it so that it was not a sliced piece of paper it was a ripped piece of paper now i am going over the whole thing with loca patina because this paint has not been sealed yet and then after i do that i'm going to make sure that i have plenty of product to do the decoupaging I just love how precious the deer and the cute little birds, you know what, I think it's birds on holly, not birds on berry. Um, regardless, you guys can look it up on my website, just there should be like a little subcategory for JRV decoupage paper and for JRV rice paper. So I'm about to get another shipment in any day now because most of these have sold and um, I'm excited to be able to 
refill my stock and get you guys doing these holiday projects. Now, after I do the decoupaging, I'm going to paint these pieces of wood that were in my scrap pile with weathered wood. I did two solid coats. I am not going to distress this because I don't need paint coming through on my Christmas holiday decor. You know what I mean? Um, after that, I sealed it with liquid patina. And then I decided, you know what, let's make these pieces of wood look older. And I feel like the liquid patina from DIY, there's a shade called Old and Gray, and I feel like it's super underused, utilized by creators and by me. There is this really old looking tone that happens when you put it on and kind of wipe it back. It's very much like a glaze. And I thought it went well with the weathered wood color. It's not too crazy, but it does very subtly age this. And then this is a nice little thing. Okay, now this has been sealed with liquid patina. So the paper is not going to be as porous as it was before. But do you see the yellow background of this paper? Well, you can change the tone of that. I just went over the whole thing with this gray. And you can see it tones down the yellow in this particular paper. So don't forget whatever paper that you've got, if you're not a super fan of the overall tone, you can change that with either dark and decrepit liquid patina. You could change it with like clear liquid patina and a white wax. Like there's so many options to make it your own. So after I'm done with this, I am going to try to get these pieces to attach to each other off camera. I attempted with my nail gun to put it at an angle like this, but this wood has like a little hollow space on the bottom and it busted the bottom of the wood. So what I did is I used some wood glue, I taped it up overnight. It's just the bottom in the back, thankfully. So it's not, it didn't mess with the picture on the front. Now, if you use a solid piece of wood and are attaching it, I still stand by the fact that a nail gun at an angle would have been a great solution. What I'm gonna end up doing is using wood glue as my solid holder, my long-term holder. So I'm gonna put that on the bottom of here. I'm also going to dab it with high temperature hot glue to keep it in place immediately so that it stays up and then the drying for a good solid 24 hours, the wood glue will be my permanent hold. So what did you guys think of today's projects? I had fun. 
I don't know if you can tell from my face, but after last week's video, I have definitely lightened up a bit. Um, I have read all the comments from last week's video and I need to sit down and really sit with them. I'm going to respond to every single one. Guys, I see you. I see that you feel seen by me and I can only say that I am so thankful about the response of being vulnerable and putting myself out there. You guys are amazing. Um, I guess this has been, it is last week's video has been in my heart for quite a while. Um, it's like, I felt like I was going through some things, but I wasn't sharing everything with you. So it feels so good to get it out there to, um, to let you know that even the people that you think maybe they could have some stuff together. Listen, I don't have much together. But if you are tempted to think people have it together, I just want you to know that we're just showing you the best parts of us and we have struggles as well. So I want you to know that you are seen. I am thankful for each and every one of you. Um, it was really good to get back to creating this week and I am getting excited about fall. Actually, listen, I know we're creating for Christmas, right? getting excited about fall being here. Halloween is next week. My kids are like, mom, we, we got to get our costumes together. So, um, we did that. My husband turned 49 this last week. Um, so I have been super busy, but three kids, that's what's going to happen. Right? So let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to all so you get updated every time I upload a new video. And guys, if you have been around here forever, please consider sharing my channel with somebody that you think would enjoy it. I'm thankful for you guys. Don't forget to create and feed your creative soul. It is necessary for all of us. Have a good week and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Also, I wanted to mention my new to me shirt, but did you die? Um, this is something that when I first started my channel, I would say often, like, I submitted my first video and I didn't die. I did this and I didn't die. It is like one of those things that fear, when it can knock you in the face, it's gonna like make you think that you won't survive it. So I got this shirt to remind me last week when I shared my heart and my soul with y'all. <sighs> I didn't die. It was a scary thing to do, but it's something that I feel more alive right now than I have in a very long time. So I also want to remind you guys to do something that scares you a little bit and surprise yourself because if you can get through something and you didn't die, you can be like, go me. I did something hard. And like my nine year old says, I can do the hard things. So I hope you guys have a good week do the hard things and I'll see you soon.